Hey everybody, 911 Systems again. We're going to have a little, this is a quickie. This is a quick video. It's not like the other 40, 20, and 25 minute videos that we've put up recently. So this is just showing you how to connect your radio. It's really simple. When you get your package in the mail, it's going to, everything's going to be in bubble wrap. The radio is going to be its own box. It's going to have its frequency on the bottom here. We'll have a yellow sticker that has your frequency on it. Um, for departments that have like a PL tone or maybe ask for wideband or narrowband receive, um, the sticker will tell you which channels are what on the bottom via yellow sticker once again. So this is a really simple, um, this is a really simple part of the system. The only thing you have to do to connect your radio is take the serial cable or the uh, RS-232 cable that was included um, with your, if you bought the kit. So you get the RS-232 cable. Um, if you bought the VHF or UHF kit from us. So all you have to do is push this in here, tighten these down. So just screw these in until they're nice and tight. Um, and then you take the other side here and you just connect this into your radio and tighten this down. And this is a used radio, so it's got a few scratches and nicks on. This is actually a 125, I believe. Yeah, this is an SD-125. We use the SD-171s and the 174s because they have CTCSS or PL tones and DCS tones. So you get a, you know, if you have those tones or codes, digital coded squelch, um, it's definitely better because you get a nice cleaner audio. So now your, your radio is connected. So the radio is connected here. This unit here, when it's plugged in, is going to provide power to this unit. And I'll just show you how that works. I'm just going to go ahead and plug this into power. Real quick, you should see the lights come on. Actually, you know what? This unit doesn't have a light, so you wouldn't even see the lights come on. You'll just see the power light come on on this once it boots up. Um, the 171 and the 174, the newer version, it has an LED light, and it will come on when it first gets power, so you know that the radio is getting power. Now, the next thing you have to do is um, just plug in your antenna. So you can hear I'm hitting the bell up there. It's <laughs> right next to the bell. But this runs to a antenna jack um, up in my ceiling. And this goes out to a VHF, UHF antenna. So you just plug that in. So that's that. And obviously you can route this. So we recommend that you keep the radio about six to eight inches from the controller. You don't want to set it on top. You know, this, this is not good. Um, this could po potentially cause interference. Um, even though both the radio and the and the controller are both in a uh, metal housing, it's best to keep a little bit of separation. So six to eight inches is a good, uh, you know, this is a 18 inch cable. So, you know, six to eight inches is good. And you would just route this cable up. So if you figure all this was mounted on a wall, you know, you can have this nice and organized and six to eight inches apart and all your wires would come in. And, and ideally, Ideally, this would even be like this because if you mount it on a wall, you could do something like that. Whew. Let's see if I can change the camera angle real quick. Evidently, trying to do these videos on the fly is not the best for me. But um, you could do something like this. Let's try and get this mounted where you can see it. So it's mounted on a wall, something like that. They just keep it six to eight inches away. And then all your cables can run down you know, into your, your outputs here for your lights and stuff and your inputs and whatnot are over here. So that's how you would, uh, connect your radio. I'm just going to disconnect all this. Uh, if you feel like you need to put the radio further away, by all means, you can use a longer, um, you can purchase a longer cable off of an online website, uh, like, uh, you know, eBay or Amazon. I'm sure they have them. That way you can maybe mount the radio uh, out of the way so you don't have the extra antenna cable and stuff causing issues. But that's how you connect your radio. And uh, if you're not going to use a radio, you can always connect. Let's see if I can get this out here. It's the worst part is trying to get the, the last piece of the screw out. You can, If you're not going to connect the radio, you can always use the audio input. Or you can just connect the pager to it and activate it that way. So... That's the, the video. It was not as short as I wanted it to be, but there you go. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us.